Today, I'm going to talk about the care and maintenance of the African spurred tortoise, or sulcata. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona, and the sulcata is typically known as the third largest tortoise behind Galapagos and Aldabras. So you need to realize it will grow large, requiring a strong barrier. I recommend railroad ties, concrete block, as they'll often push through a chain link fence. Another thing to keep in mind is that they do burrow. They dig deep burrows and multiple tortoises may live in the same burrow. When you put a person in the burrow, it shows the size, a comparison of the same burrow with a tortoise and a person. They're from the deserts in Africa, similar climate to what we have in Phoenix. So they do quite well here year round outside. But the other thing you need to know, if you have multiple males together, they will fight unless you have a very large enclosure. And I've seen them actually fight and kill each other as they will stick their guler into the neck of the other tortoise, causing it to bleed out. This time, the tortoise is distracted by a female, but often, if they don't stick the guler into the neck, the other thing they do is flip it over, where it may bake in the sun and die before you find it and are able to turn it over. Oftentimes, they are able to turn themselves over, but if they're in a location where they can't, the desert sun will kill them quickly. So be prepared, that little hatchling on top will grow into that large tortoise in, well, 10 years they've got that big. And well, it'd be great to have a grass yard like this to keep them. You'll notice that typically, wherever they're at, they eat everything that's living, and before long, it's a desert. So remember, before you get that two inch hatchling, remember that it'll grow into a 200 pound tortoise that's 30 inches long, that will fight with other males, and that will dig deep burrows, and will eat everything around, and needs a strong enclosure to keep it contained. But if you've got the right setup, they're a great tortoise to have. I give the warning because sulcatas are one of the most prolific tortoises and readily available. And the unsuspecting individual that buys one at an expo for $30 to $50 may be shocked to find out what they've gotten themselves into. And as it grows larger, they may find out that they're not able to maintain it or keep it. As you see some of the damage that they can do. A number of people will provide heat in the winter for the tortoises. And while I have done that in the past, in reality, the only difference is when I get eggs. When I heat them in the winter, I get eggs in the late fall. And if I don't provide them heat, I get eggs in the spring. A heated hide can easily be constructed from wood or concrete, similar to this that I use for my Galapagos tortoises, heated with the 250 watt red infrared heat light. These supplies can be purchased from ZooMed, Home Depot, or Lowe's, but make sure you get a fixture sufficient for that 250 watt bulb. This is my brother Richard, and he built a barn out of straw, stuccoed it, and you may know him as he's the first one to produce the ivory sulcata. You also need to protect your tortoises from local predators. I have a number of coyotes that come through the yard, but fortunately they haven't bothered my tortoises, though I've seen that they've been an issue for other keepers. Rattlesnakes are also occasionally removed from the yard, and I saw this bobcat had something in its mouth, and as I snapped off a few pictures and later went and investigated, it was a little hatchling sulcata. Fortunately, it moved on and hasn't been back. I flood irrigate my property during the summer, and a stream of water flows through the sulcata pen, allowing them to drink, and they'll also flip mud back on the top of their shell to cool down. Sulcatas will eat just about anything. A grass yard is best, 
but you can supplement with Bermuda hay, alfalfa, and many veggies. Prickly pear cactus is a great supplement as it's high in fiber and calcium, which is important for breeding and egg producing females. Tortoises will breed throughout the year, after which they'll dig, the females will dig with their back legs and lay eggs. You'll generally get clutches about a month apart through the spring of anywhere from about 10 to 30 eggs. They will generally lay about two to four clutches of eggs per year. And I generally catch them as they lay them and put them in a shoebox with peat moss, vermiculite, perlite, slightly moist. And after about three months, they'll hatch. Hatchlings are raised indoors in peat moss covered with Bermuda grass. You may include a humid hide, but I moisten the peat moss with warm water frequently. So cottas are temperature sex determinant, and those incubated at almost 90 degrees will produce females. Those much lower than that are generally males. Higher than 90 degrees and you'll get deformities or the eggs will die and not hatch. Indoor hatchlings should be maintained at a constant temperature in the mid 80s. A slight drop at night is fine and they should have UVB lights over them during the day. The humid warm hide helps prevent pyramiding as you'll see this yearling has perfect round growth. No pyramiding or raised scoots that are often seen in captive born hatchlings. Hatchlings can be fed various greens can jump start them with a diet with Missouri and some people want to add calcium which will also promote growth. They may be periodically soaked in shallow warm water where they will drink and often defecate. I typically move the tortoises outside once they reach about a year old or four inches and then they're big enough that birds or other predators typically won't run off with them. The ivory sulcata is basically a dark-eyed albino. There's also a regular albino, the one in the front you can see the pink eyes versus the dark eyes of the ivory tortoise. They look very similar except for the color of the eyes, but as they grow, the growth continues to come in light. This is about a four inch ivory. Males and females may be distinguished by the concave plastron that males have and the much longer tail. Male has that long tail, the female has just a short stubby tail. Also the gular scoots in front under the neck are typically much bigger in a male than in a female. And they can come in a variety of different sizes and shapes as seen by these pictures. Males grow larger than females and sulcatas basically reach sexual maturity at about 14 to 16 inches where they will start breeding and can lay viable eggs. Fighting, eating, and sleeping, pretty much the life of a sulcata. They'll come up in the morning and bask to warm up, and then it's chowing down, breeding, and sometimes both at the same time. African spur tortoises were basically imported into the U.S. between about 1990 and 2000. After that, the import was banned due to a tick that could possibly carry the heart water disease. 
And so the import of sulcatas, leopard tortoises, bells, hingebacks, and maybe some others was banned at that time. And surprisingly enough, the African spur tortoises have done so well that there are probably more sulcatas in the U.S. than there are now in Africa. Many people are against the breeding of African spurred tortoises as there are so many in the U.S. However, thousands of hatchlings each year are exported out of the country. If these export quotas weren't filled by captive hatched species such as the African spurred tortoise, it's likely that they would be filled by wild-caught specimens. So, in a sense, the African spurred tortoise is saving other species of tortoise as well. As with any tortoise species, they are long-term commitment and should only be purchased by people that have a commitment for the long term and are willing to meet the needs of this unique species which means having a large area for it to roam, being prepared for the size that it will grow and the burrows that it will dig and the damage that it can do. But in the right setup, they're exciting to watch and observe. To see this tiny hatchling grow into this huge tortoise. Yep, maybe you too one day will take your tortoise out for a walk. But remember, most of the people that take their tortoise out for a walk, it's because it broke through a barrier and got out. And now it's time to pick it up and return it back home. Which isn't an easy task for a large tortoise. But I hope you enjoyed this little presentation on the African Spurred Tortoise and check out some of the others. Take care.